Okay, so JID. Um, this beat, I believe, if I'm not wrong, is the high power beat by Kendrick, which came out a while ago. I think uh, it was one of Kendrick's uh, beloved songs. Is the high power? Is the beat that you behind it is uh, Kendrick's high power? The song we were talking about today is JID's 2007. Now, this song is, it's a, it's a weird time capsule kind of thing. And I think that's why I kind of like it. But JID is always very talented in his, uh, his wordplay. Um, as in the first verse, he goes, 2017, Cole dropped a come up. I was in high school playing corners. Never dreamt about mumbling words in front of hundreds. Ah, uh, that it just, it kind of flows off the tongue. You know, forever, hundred inch corner, come up in front of hundreds. I just, I like the way that this plays off each other. And he says, 2019 is a warm up. He's kind of uh, relaying J. Cole's history. J. Cole. Um, his father is on here, and and in truth be told, I think I do like tracks like this because they're they genuinely come off as original, and it's very hard to beat these original songs. He says one of his friends wanted them in the studio dorm room next to his, and he was making beats, um, but he was clearly freestyling over them, and then he said, that's how he got noticed, and I think that. Um, he says. When his friends was a receiver, he was a uh, D back, so I think he mean defensive back. Um, he says I could be lyrical, I could be lyrical, but I put on cleats, and it's it's a weird thing, right? Like scrambling through lines with my hand like a piece of paper, like just scratching through them all, you know, just trying to figure out what what words are better, and they rhyme together. And I think overall, I think I do kind of like this kind of JID, right? Like I do like this. I can rap, but I can, <laughs> but I'd rather tackle and pedal back, which that makes sense. Um, I got player of the year. Figured I was on track to be, you know, you know, it's crazy because there's a lot of people, especially when they play university ball or college ball, that are normally put on the right track to either get to or high school and get on a college team, right, or secondary. Where, you know, they get one, they go from secondary, it's, it's a weird thing. So, most people find contracts that way. Pat was in my ear about rhyming on the tracks. After the practice recording, we got, we got, we kind of got it like wax. We kind of got used to it. Um, on campus, I heard a few rappers from ATL or Atlanta. Stabbing. Maybe we could make something happen. I was serious enough. I wasn't even serious enough to be curious. And I think this is maybe where he met um, Earth Gang. In relevance to, because from what I know, right? From what I know, because I'm a huge kind of Dreamville fan. Um, there was rumors that. There's rumors that J.I.D. and Earth Gang, they met on a campus and started making music with each other after a tour. He, he refers to that later in here. But he talks about um, he got his brother, he got his family members out of jail, did a nickel and, a, you know. And he talks about uh, the sideline story about J. Cole that came out. In 2011, and then he talks about playing Section 80 and listen, warming up, listen to Wheezy. I don't know if he means Wheezy the producer, because Wheezy the producer has been producing beats for a while, or he means Wheezy as a little Wayne, but as here an interpreter, he's kind of paying homage. He says, <laughs> Section 80 dropped in, yeah, we played it deaf, because a lot, I just, I think there's a majority, there's a small majority of people that do like Section 80 as an album compared to other Kendrick albums and I think that's why he put section 80 because it's such a iconic album and if and if I could re recollect correct you tried to sign him for yourself which I think is amazing I think I think Kendrick and Cole tried I think Cole tried to sign Kendrick or Kendrick tried to 
it, one of those ways it would happen where they were trying to sign each other when they were first getting started. And but they did co-sign for each other, so that didn't matter. And then he talks about, you know, his, his family, his personal life, um, um, scholarships, which is this weird thing of people where they're like, it's a weird thing because he 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 says that he left on a he left on a full scholarship to go to school and get a degree. And it's and it's it's this weird assumption, right? Like it's this weird assumption, especially in certain communities where. If you get a degree, you made it. Or if you go to college, you'll um, you'll get the number one position. You'll be set for life. And you know that is you know that's tr- that's true for some, not true for all. Um, it's a lot of people. His dad addresses it saying, um, "We're taught education was was the number one thing, or way to get a the way to get ahead." And I think that I think to some degree, into his you know to his respect, there are some. There's some people that that works for, and then that you can see why Cole and Kendrick and JID are so lyrical in the way that they speak because everything they says has that meaning behind it, which I do like. He says the never story dropped. I was coming off a tour, um, but yeah, but he says it was an Earth Gang set, and I only came to do a song. Over exit, hey bro, uh, he's kind of nice with his beats. Uh, can we get him? And he had a connection with Cole because Cole, it's a weird thing in hip hop. I think hip hop's the only genre of music where we're trying to scout to see if we can get somebody before they break the mainstream and give them that ability to go higher and rap. So I do like that flow of it. Um, he said he tried to throw Brown. That should open up for um Omen. But Omen, I think, is also on the Dreamville roster that I think but it shows how they connected. <laughs> Only four says that maybe we should rob Gilly on the phone. It's it's a weird like these um Gibbs, Gibby. It's it's a weird thing to definitely listen to. It's it's definitely a weird thing. I feel like I'm in a mannequin challenge and I'm just standing still. To where he's no longer sure. And I think he was in a spot where he was like, I could really make money off of rap because I'm making X amount of dollars before rap. Uh, and it's a weird thing. So I think I get it. Like the motivation behind this is paying homage of, okay, I knew I had to do all of this to get in. I did it. Um, I did it. And this is how it turned out. I'm not sure which coach. Yeah, but I wasn't... Okay, so we're going to talk. Okay, so he had a conversation about... uh, About signing to Coach K and uh, so don't take advice from people. Because they're going to try to take advantage of they're going Whatever you get off of somebody's advice, they're going to think you, you, that you owe them. And I think that's the weirdest message to hear. And I'm not sure which... I'm about to sign to Coach K, but... I ain't take that advance. Um, which I don't know if he's talking about um Mike. It's uh, that last name always messes me up, but he is the um you know um he was uh the USA basketball coach for the Olympics. I think that's what he's talking about, but I'm not entirely sure what he means about Coach K. Um Cole says, hold on, hold on, I got a plan for you. And to Cole's and to Cole's benefit, it did work out because Cole is an artist that does something differently than other artists, especially when an artist runs a label or a brand. He can understand it and, you know, kind of see where you're coming from on release dates, albums like that. Um, But we haven't really heard anybody on Dreamville say we couldn't put it out when we wanted to, so... Um, and J. Cole just says, hey, I remember the time you came to my crib and I told you to bring Earth Gang um, to Carolina to make a song. The Dreamville, Dream, the, the Dreamville sign wasn't on the, like, wasn't even thought of, which is weird. I, I think there are a lot of artists that are like, well, if I'm going to go, if I go out there to 
deal with the Drake or make a song with the Drake. Um, Lil Baby, J. Cole, Kendrick, they trying to sign me or something. And and that's the only reason I would go up there. J.I.D., J.I.D., Earth Gang, they didn't have that contract. They didn't have the minimum con- They did not have a contract going up there. They just did it because they were passionate about it. And to be on a Cole song is, let alone will put you on the map, but it, it's, it's, it does amazing numbers for you. Um, but I think I think we, we understand that, right? <laughs> he says, but he could tell that he was very determined that's sep- that's the separator from most people and J I D. And I think that's true because J I D still puts out good music. He's not switched up his flow, it's still lyrical, it's still something you can vibe to. I don't know, overall I do like this song, but I do feel like this song does pay homage to two thousand and seven and I'm not sure when Colin J I D um looked at because i did learn at jid maybe 2010 so i'm not entirely sure how him and cole were before 2010 but that's where i learned jid and cole i learned a little before that so i'm not really sure um because my first dealing of other than j cole was actually the come of a warm-up um So I do understand that, but this this song does kind of pay homage. Um, I posted to Gradge and make my way back to Atlanta, um, which is a weird thing because a lot of people end up doing it. A lot of rappers um, end up trying to like uh, move around and then end up um, back to where they need to get to, and it's a weird thing because I do like it. Um, it shows motivation and it shows you know you you're willing to get anything done and that is true i don't know like i I do like this song over like any originals like this is definitely a solid seven out of ten this is definitely solid it's it's almost perfect it's solid and it's a kendrick beat that he's rapping on it's very hard to show kendrick on this beat but i think he might have done it 